All right, hi, Chem 30 students. So if you're here already, that means you would have um, gone through the whole process with School Zone and gone through um, Moodle in order to get this link. So now that you're here, I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of how to use this site. So um, yeah, hopefully if you have any problems with any of the Moodle stuff, um, I mean, I don't think you would have, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But if you did, then please just contact me and um, I can walk you through that. So for this site, hopefully it's going to be pretty straightforward for you guys. Um, <clears throat> basically, to start out with, you're on this home page already, so you would have clicked on the welcome link. Um, the next page you should definitely look at is resources. Um, so it's really, really important that you guys are familiar with the course outline and that you use it regularly as a reference for what you should be doing in the course. Um, lots of students want to skip over this, and I kind of understand that because I always like to skip over instructions as well. Um, but it really is important that you read through this thoroughly, especially because it contains instructions on how to do the online testing that we work with. Um, and if you ask me questions about the online testing that have been answered in here, which basically every question you have should be. Um, I'm just going to tell you to go and read the course outline. So just do it to start out with and that'll save you a lot of trouble. Um, so a couple of things, make sure because you are in a 30 level class, make sure you're registered at MyPass so that you can get information about diplomas. Um, Learn Alberta and, M and Exam Bank are both um, resources that you can use if you're looking for additional um, kind of like Learn Alberta is more like just additional learning information and then exam bank is practice tests that you can do and so you can use these two logins for those two websites <clears throat> here you have an outline of your schedule so basically the way it works is i've given you your due dates for when you should have each test written um, and essentially what will happen is if you don't meet that, you'll get an email that will indicate to you when you have an extension until probably about a week after the given date. And if you don't meet that extension, then you'll be assigned a zero for the test. OK, so do make sure that you're following these deadlines carefully. If you have extenuating circumstances, make sure you email me ahead of time. Don't email me like on March 12th to ask for an extension on your unit A exam. Um, so ask me about an extension extension ahead of time and of course I'm willing to be reasonable and accommodate you if you need it. Um, let's see, the other big important thing is check your school email daily. Uh, basically if I send out any information, this is where you're going to get it. So in a regular class you'd have a teacher in front of you, you know, every day who can tell you information that you need to know. I don't have that luxury because you guys aren't in front of me every single day. So your school email is the only way you can get important information. So if I send out information about something going on with testing, something going on at the school, something like that, um, you are only going to get it if you're checking your school email. And if you miss something and tell me that it's because you weren't checking your school email, that's not going to be an excuse because it is your responsibility when you're in online school to be in communication and the way that that works is through school email. Um, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll walk you through how this kind of mentions how to walk through the rest of this site. So I'm, I'm going to skip over that because we'll just do it in person. Um, but one really important thing to look at here is ways that you can get help. So if you are working through questions and you just you can't get the right answer or whatever, you know, if you have any kind of a question or a problem in the course, um, whether that's with an actual like problem you're working on or just general course questions, you can send me an email with your question. Now, if this is a problem that you're working on, please be specific about the question. Like tell me if it's in a workbook, tell me which workbook it is, what page, what question. Um, same thing with the textbook. And then I can always send you a detailed video of how to solve the problem. Okay, so if you just weren't able to get the right answer, you should be checking your answers in the solution manuals that are provided. But if you can't get that answer, um, then you can ask me for a video of how to solve it and I can do that. The other th option is to attend the weekly online session. So asking for help with an idea there. So for Chem 30, we meet every Tuesday from one till two. Um, and so, yeah, you can basically come to that session and ask for help with your question. The other option is that you can um, 
actually I should change that. It's not email me. You should get you can schedule an on online or on site meeting. Um, right now, actually, we're in the COVID um, crisis, so there's no on site meetings. But you can email me to schedule an online meeting. Okay, and those are available Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I'll show you when we go back to the resources pages where um, you can book the session. Then um, this is very important here. This is all about the online testing. I won't go through it in too much detail because I expect you to read this carefully. Um, now it is really important because if you're not following these guidelines, um, <clears throat> like it's highlighted in red here, then you will basically have to maybe write tests in person with me online right now. That's how that would work. Um, or and you might have to write a replacement exam depending on the level of you know the level to which you did not follow the guidelines so you can click on this link to see the proctorio student guide and that will basically tell you everything you need to know for for doing these tests okay so make sure you're really familiar with that the main things to be aware of are that you are doing a 360 degree scan of your room with your camera before you write. So I need to see the surface of your desk. I need to see everything that's in front of you. Um, and then any papers you have on your desk, you have to show to me both sides. So that includes your data booklet and scrap paper. Um, the other main important point is please do make sure that you're aware that for written questions, um, because with CAM it's pretty hard to enter them into the computer. So with written questions, just make sure that you're aware that you are going to be writing them like on a piece of paper. So you should have scrap paper. And then before you finish the test, you're going to show them to the camera so that I can see what you had written down. Make sure you do it slowly so that I can see it properly. And then immediately after the test, you're also going to email me a copy of those written answers. Okay. Um, rewrite policy at the end of the course. So not right away. If you don't do well on unit A, don't ask for a rewrite right away. What I want you to do is work through the whole course. And then at the end, we can go back and pick whichever unit exam will give you the best um, like chance of improving your mark. And we'll, we can do a rewrite for that one test, okay? But you are only allowed one rewrite in the course, so make sure that you are being careful with, um, you know, how you're studying for tests. Okay, back to the resources page. You have your data booklet. This is what you'll be allowed to use for any and all tests. So make sure that you have a printed copy of that before you write your tests. Um, also because Proctorio will not allow you to um, like have a digital copy open during the test. So just make sure you have that downloaded and printed before you start any tests. You also need to make sure that you're familiar with everything in the, in the data booklet so that you know what information will be available to you on a test and what won't. Um, <clears throat> make sure that when you come into the test also you do not have writing in your data booklet. Um, it should be totally blank. Here's where you can book appointments with me. So you would just click on this link and it'll take you to a site that will help you to book appointments. Um, for our online sessions, you can click on this link. So that is again on Wednesday, or sorry, on Tuesdays from one till two, you can click on this. Same thing if you had an online appointment with me, you could click on this to meet me there. Um, here's a link to exam bank again. Um, I know I had one in the course outline and final exam schedule, but I'm not sure exactly what's going to be going on with that because of um, COVID. Okay, so then basically it's just how do you work through the course. Now I am actually in the process of moving everything over from Moodle. So this site is under construction. Um, I'm, I did try to start with basically where students were at this point when I started building up this site um, because my students currently still have access to um, to the Moodle site, so the other stuff is on there. So I just wanted to start with where they're at. Um, I did have the review unit posted. So before you start Chem 30, of course, you should be doing review to make sure you remember everything that you need to know from previous science courses. Um, so for every page that you'll have in this site, there's always a to-do list at the top, which kind of instructs you how to work thing through things, but it should be pretty straightforward. Basically, I break things down day by day. So I count each day as a school day. So 
if you have the Edmonton Public School calendar, um, any day that's like supposed to be a classes in session day is what I would count as a day that you should be working. Um, and that's how I build up the schedule. So if you're working on weekends or over spring break or things like that, you will have additional time. So, so that'll give you like a little bit of extra leeway. Um, but essentially, I've tried to build it so that the days where you're actually doing these video lessons are just the same as the days you would have in a regular classroom at a regular school. So it's broken down by day. You have the notes here and then you have um, a video lesson that basically goes through the notes. OK, so each day you should be doing, you know, that set of notes and the video lesson that accompanies it and then any questions that are assigned at the end of the notes. Then when you move into the units, <clears throat> I'm going to jump to unit B here. Same thing, there's a to-do list that includes the date that you need to make sure you have your test written on. And then with the units, it's a little bit different because at the top I'll have a unit resource section. So basically what I'll have here is solutions for any of the textbook problems in the unit. And then I'll also have blank notes. Um, so these are kind of like the student version of the notes that if you were to print these off, you'd have space to fill in the answers yourself. Okay, so they're not pre-filled in for you. Um, so you could always print those off if you like in order to fill them in. Um, and then basically what we do is, again, it's broken down by day by day. So you'd start on day one and um, you would work on this set of notes. And I have a video in which I go through this set of notes. OK, so the best recommendation for online learning is to treat this like a regular class. So sit down with your notes and as I'm going through the lesson, fill them in along with me. OK, the nice thing with a video lesson, of course, is that you can pause it. You can play it back if you need to, if you miss something. If you have any questions as the video is going along, write them down. Send me an email at the end of of the lesson, right? Just the way you would, well, not quite, but kind of the way you would in a regular classroom. Okay, so hopefully that helps you guys um, learn how to use the site before the final exam. <coughs> There's some final exam material here. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> See, and this is, I'm still building this. So this was from my old physics site where I had final exam stuff, but I will make sure I have final exam materials here for Chem 30 as well. Um, the other thing too is actually at the end of each one of these units, you'll find a review section for the whole unit. Now, again, I'm still building up this section. So I don't know if, sorry, everything is frozen up here. Sorry guys, good time for the computer to freeze up. Um, but basically at the bottom I will have a unit review. So it's gonna have diploma questions, um, chapter questions, things like that. So make sure that you go through the unit review before you sign up to write your test and make sure of course that you're checking your answers. Each one of these packages should have the answers in them already. Okay, so all the best with Chem 30 and feel free to contact me if you need help with anything.